this is two British heavyweights, top of the bill. The best heavyweight fight that can be made right now. Look at that for a shot. Both guys can win this fight. You've got to be mid to short range, through the middle there. If AJ's landing that right hand again and again, it's the end of Dubois. The undercard, it's been a little bit lively. <laughs> 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 This is the breakdown. Everything you need to know before Anthony Joshua fights Daniel Dubois at Wembley Stadium for the heavyweight championship of the world on TNT Sports Box Office on Saturday, the 21st of September. Only one man can win. Daniel Dubois is now currently IBF heavyweight champion of the world, and I've been called in to come and challenge him for it. Let's get this party started! Dubois is fragile. And he's gone down. I've seen AJ also go into his shell a bit. So worry about what people say. Just worry about yourself. This is a truly uplifting story coming back up again. The punching power's there, the boxing's there, the heart and the desire is there. Do you want to go now? Let's go. Two Brits fight for the world heavyweight title in front of 100,000 people. Hey, hey, no, 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 don't disrespect me on my life. No, no, no. Once that bell goes, there won't be 100,000 people in the ring. There'll just be two of them in the ring. Well, fellas, thanks for joining me today. Three former world champions, Carl Frampton, Richie Woodall, George Groves. World champion boxing writer as well, Steve <laughs> Bunt. That's the way we wrote it. I'm going to start with you, George, just to talk about the magnitude of this fight at Wembley. You've been there before, 80,000, I think it was. It's going to be more this time. But what about fighting there in that stadium, a massive event? What's the night going to be like? I mean, boxer, when it goes to the stadiums, you know it's going to be big. Um, I think it can't just be about a solid card. It's got to be built around a major main event. And I think this is what we've got. We've all fought. Well, apart from you two, and up. <laughs> we'll and up. do it in a minute, just just so, just so we can join the club. And, and a lot and of amateur fights, so this lad I know did. It is, but I'm talking about All atmospheres, right, big, big <laughs> atmospheres. <laughs> OK, Rich. <laughs> we, You're we the fought, other one out. We fought in front of big atmospheres, but like, is Wembley different than the O2? Is Wembley different than the MEN or, or all these other arenas? Once you're in there, in the centre of the ring, having a fight with another man, is there much of a difference? Yeah, it's different. Yeah. You're in the hotel next door, you're, but then you don't see nothing because then you're in the stadium and then you're in the changing room. Then you come out and you just see a vast amount of people and they'll, it's lights on, on, a, on a mobile phone. It's like you're stuck in the Milky Way. That's a special event. Irrespective of who's fighting, you know you're part of history. And that's what a massive event outdoors. And that's specifically, Fletch, what Wembley does. It's that bit special. An extra special, Rich, because we've got two British heavyweights in there with gigantic futures, even though AJ's been there before and Daniel Dubois is now a recognised world champion. Big fights are in the future. This is two British heavyweights, top of the bill. I mean, this is just about as good as it gets. It's one of those fights that I think everyone wants to see. Two boxers who are at different stages of their career, most definitely. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's an old lion, young lion situation, but it's not far off that. I think, obviously, AJ's further down the road in his career than Daniel Dubois. But stylistically, then, similar attributes they have. Uh, du Dubois, for me, working with him up at GB when he was in the Olympic squad, he had the hardest jab that I have ever felt. On the flip side with AJ, when I worked with him on his Olympic cycle, he had the hardest right hand that I've ever felt. So two guys, similar attributes in terms of the straight punches that they deliver. Oh, it's going to be a cracker, it really is. It is going to be a cracker, Carl, isn't it? Because if you're a heavyweight right now, what a great time to be alive. Yeah. I mean, there are so many big fights, there are so many great heavyweights, it's so much down the line for the winner that they must be aware of that. That yeah. This is not just about this fight, but it's about what it sets up down the line as well. Absolutely. And I, and I think that if you look at typically what has been happening, while the, the top guys maybe not fighting each other as much, and then the guys waiting on a shot at one of the guys at the top, and this is a really competitive fight, and you touched on it, Richie, that they're, they're at different stages of their careers. Josh is a lot more advanced, but I'd say that there's an argument. You could, you could maybe say that both are possibly in the form of their life at the minute. 
it's time to play devil's advocate. If I said to you after the defeat to Alexander Usyk that AJ would have convincing wins against Otto Wallin, Robert Hellenius, Jermaine Franklin, Francis Ngannou, and then after that, there would be a relatively widespread opinion that Anthony Joshua is A, back to his best, and B, maybe better than we've ever seen. Would you think that's a fair assessment based on the opponents that he's been in with? The first thing, Fletch, straight away, is that it has to be the nature of the victory. Very few people said he was going to knock Engano out in two rounds and do it with disdain and look at him when he was on the floor because he was told on the day by Tyson Fury, whatever you do, don't try and knock him out. The Otto Valin win is better than anybody gives him credit for. He was a guy that everyone had avoided since he'd taken T Tyson Fury all those rounds. And AJ did a good job on him. Hellenius was just a good shot. I'm going to throw something out there. I'm going to, I'm going to devil's advocate, your devil's advocate, <laughs> with a triple trump card. And Richie, you can come in with another trump card. I'm going to say, not only is this the best AJ, this isn't the old AJ, this is a smart AJ. The old AJ was the reckless one. What we've got now is the man with a little bit of recklessness in him, but with a little bit of sense inside him. Fletch, he might just be the best version of AJ. Well, I think it's been clever matchmaking because you've had to bring a boxer back from, his, he's had two losses, but get his confidence back. Perfect matchmaking, those four opponents after, the, uh, after Alexander Usyk for me. There, there's a couple of things with AJ. I think that mentally he has to be really on it and, and switched on and focused. I think that after the Ruiz fight as well, he didn't really know what style he wanted to to be as a fighter. He was a bit more tentative. He wasn't as aggressive as he used to be. He wasn't as exciting as he used to be. But now, although the list of opponents since the Usyk defeat haven't been massive names and we expected him to beat them, I think that bunsey has got it right. It's the way he beat them. I mean, if this fight sees round seven, either way, I'll be surprised. Frampton's got the predictions early. <laughs> He's got a plane to catch. This is obvious. <laughs> let's, let, let, let's get this absolutely right. There's no straight form guide here because Dubois is a different fighter since September of Octo or October of last year. The AJ we've got now since last September is a good AJ. So really, all of our assessments, they don't, need to, they don't even need to be historical. They can just be from the last few months. Just, he's just an experienced guy now, Joshua. Mm. He's been involved in so many big fights. He's had so much pressure on him, you know, since, since an amateur boxer in the Olympics that the occasion should never really get to him. But he's got to perform, hasn't he? It's two heavyweights. They both throw right hands. They both get hit with right hands. Any suggestion this is going to be a chess match, well, it would be a massive shot. And they both believe it's a walkover. And that's a beautiful ingredient. Do you in think that's the... Do you oh, think I'm, they both believe oh, that I'm, it's a walkover? I've spent enough time with them in this last four or five months. They honestly... I'm convinced. They both are convinced it's a walkover. I'm not sure Don Charles... <laughs> thinks it is, and I'm not sure Ben Davison thinks it is. But the two boxers, hand on heart, I'd stake my claim and my green socks that they absolutely believe it's a walkover. They are very green. They are, darling. They are very green. They are very green. So why do you think Daniel Dubois is better? You don't have to go that far back. You just have to look at his last two performances for Dubois in particular. The Jarrell Miller fight was... It was a tough fight for him. He really had to bite down his gum shield and, and dig in and kind of punch back. The Hergovic fight Ooh. was difficult for him at the start and he fought through it and won it really, really well. I think that once, once you're involved in them sort of wars, it's okay doing it in the gym and stuff, but until you've done it on a fight night, you don't really know if you can do it. And he's done it twice now in his last two fights. The bo boxing public was saying he's a quitter. He's a quitter. And so the, those last two fights, he proved that he's not a quitter and he had to come through it against Miller. And I think his own man played a massive part in the last contest against Hergovic. That was unbelievable. Um, when he literally got in the corner and he, he, he came out a, a, a different man and showed, you know, a, a, um, immense physical and mental strength but I think going into this fight yes AJ is very confident but equally if not more 
because of the public, what they were saying about Daniel Dubois, he's passed those tests now in those last two fights. Well, I'm telling you, even in those first two or three rounds, when Hergovic could not miss Dubois with that big right hand, I thought he was in danger of being stopped. I yep. think everybody did. OK, when he was going back to the corner, there was a smile on Daniel's face. He was looking at Don Charles, clear as day. And that, that gives me a little bit of strength, that he's not looking down, he's not looking away. You know what I mean. You three fighters know what I mean. And, and you've had it in fights that you've lost. You know you're not there in the corner. You can just see it. Your body language is different. Well, Daniel's body language was, don't worry, in a couple of rounds, I'll get to him. And that, that to me, was even more, more satisfying and alarming for AJ than the actual, the actual ending, the fact that he was enjoying it. Dubois is, is boxing through and through. Like, you know, he's been boxing since, since he was tiny. You know, he was, it was at my amateur Has he ever club. been tiny, Daniel? I think, I think once upon a time, small once small upon a time, like those pictures up so. of him in the gym. Smaller. And there's like, there's, there's wee Daniel Dubois, he's skinny. Um, he, he grew. Uh, Steve, he grew. <laughs> he had a couple of growth spurs. He did. He, 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 he might still be growth spurs. No. So, <laughs> but the, the point is that I don't know if he's a deep thinker, Dubois, but he is boxing for and for. And if it just takes someone around him just to keep him clear minded, these, this is what we're doing tonight, Daniel. This, this is the tactics, this is the game plan, this is what you need to think about. Don't think about anything else. I've been around a lot of AJ road shows. He's been there, he's done it, he's writing a book on it. Dubras suddenly going to find himself seven days before he goes on a secret tunnel to the dressing room. He's going to find himself in a whirlwind, an absolute whirlwind. And it is breathtaking, Fletch. You've been around four or five days at these big fights. An AJ fight is nothing quite like it. The implications, Bunsey, yeah. for both of them, huge. The biggest fight in the world is there for the winner. I mean, you, you, you can't kind of underestimate what's on the line for these two. The implications, Fletch, first of all, it's to become a world heavyweight champion again. For AJ, that would be the third time, joining an elite club, and he wants to be in that club, trust me. For Dubois, it will be finally getting somewhere, really somewhere, so he can genuinely look at everyone and say, I told you. So the implications are massive, not just for these two, but for heavyweight boxing... Is there more jeopardy here, though, for AJ than Dubois? Because if Daniel loses, you could still see a way back based on his age. Mm. If Anthony Joshua loses this, is that it at this level? I'd say there probably is more jeopardy for AJ, just at the stage of his career he's at, his, his age as well. And, you know, we, he's already had a, a few defeats. Um, likewise, Dubois has had a few defeats, but he's young enough to be able to come again, I suppose. Definitely more pressure on AJ going into this fight. And, and like we talked about earlier, I think that's a nice position for Daniel Dubois to be in. If he does win it, AJ, three-time heavyweight champ, yeah, that goes into legendary st status at the end of the day, doesn't it? But for me, he cannot afford to lose. So, it's time to take a more detailed look at this fight. I've got the finest analyzer of a fight in Richie Woodall, the best breaker-downer, if that's a word, of a fight. <laughs> um, Rich, you've been having a look at this in a lot more detail and picked out some key areas. I think we're going to start with Anthony Joshua. We are indeed. So let's have a look at Anthony Joshua's straight right hand, which is one of his best shots. Lots of power generated in this punch. This is against Charles Martin when he actually won the title. Lovely right hand there. So that's a lovely sharp right hand. Martin, but Martin gets up from that, but there's more to come, more to follow again. He's just measuring with his jab, just touching. There it is there, look. And then there's the right hand there. You never really speak about Anthony Joshua's hand speed, but that right hand gets there in a flash, and Daniel Dubois has got to be fully aware of that. Yes, he has, I indeed. He can't afford to make any mistakes, Daniel Dubois, by coming over his front foot. But here, in, in the last example of the straight right hand, this is against Francis Ngannou, which, was, which uh, we all knew was a dangerous opponent, and to beat him the way he did was impressive. So let's have a look at it here. Joshua just measuring with his jab, just touching, touching, touching. And what he's actually wanting him to do here, Flex, there he is, there's that right hand there. So. What's he waiting for, Richie? What does he need to see before he lets that right He's hand go? He actually, by flicking the jab out, he actually wants Ngana to come forward. But Ngana doesn't come forward, and so he decides to go himself and catch him with the right hand. If he's going to get a stoppage or a knockout, Fletch, it will be through that right hand. I really believe that. But that's not all Anthony Joshua. He's got a right uppercut 
which is a short or mid-range punch, which is pretty, pretty lethal. Let's have a look at it here, Fletch. So this is the uppercut from AJ. And this was against, obviously, Vladimir Klitschko. Now, what's this for a punch? On the inside, there it oh. is there. <laughs> here at this point now, Klitschko is, is in trouble. He's trying to recover. He eventually goes down. You can see the power, Richard. It snaps his head back in there. That is a sensational shot. Now, remember, with the right uppercut, it's either short range or it's mid range. So it's on the inside when the opponent's fairly close. So that's what Daniel Dubois may have to watch out for. When they get up close, he's got to watch out for that uppercut from Anthony Joshua. So what we're saying here is he can't switch off for a second because of the array of shots that Anthony Joshua can hurt you exactly. with. Exactly. Now, this is against Andy Ruiz. Now, that was a little uppercut on the inside, then he follows it up with the left hand. So, it, like I said, he's very deceptive. This is against Dillian White. Dillian White's in trouble now. And then there's the oh. uppercut there. That's a Rocky Balboa uppercut, that. It's I mean, that, that's, shot. that's outrageous. When you see well, that, the power that he generates Well, there. not only that, Dillian White is a tough, tough yeah. man. That stresses the power that he has. Dillian's a tough guy, but he just couldn't recover from that shot. Now, his jab, it could be a battle of the jabs early on, and that will be an interesting battle. Let's not neglect um, Anthony Joshua's jab. He's got a good jab, yes, he has. But I think, in terms of against Daniel Dubois, Daniel's got the better jab. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Because they're both going to use the jab, but they're probably going to use it in a different way. Different way. Anthony will use his to set up the other shots, and yes. Daniel will use his to try and control the fight. Yeah, exactly. I think Joshua will use that jab as a measuring tool, measuring stick. What he's got to try and do is tease, 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 and as he comes forward, then he connects with the right hand. That's close enough, by the way. That's yeah. absolutely close enough. Yeah. OK, Richard, let's move it on, then, to Daniel Dubois and some of the keys for him as an attacking fighter here in this fight against Anthony Joshua, where do you want to start? I'd like to start with just the basic punch of all boxers is that jab of, of Daniel Dubois. But this isn't just a normal jab, Fletch. It's probably as hard as a lot of heavyweights' right hands. This is how hard this shot is. It's a great punch indeed. So let's have a look at it here. Now, this is against uh, Gerald Miller. Now, what's this for a shot there? Do you see how that just stops him in his tracks? This is another one. Look at that for a shot. I mean, that for me, textbook um, jab as the opponent's coming forward. But that, as a coach, that impresses me so much. And that is such uh, an underestimated punch, what he's throwing there. I've just stopped it <laughs> right on cue there. <laughs> yeah, look at that. That looks for a painful shot. to yeah. me, yeah. He stops him in his tracks. And you're talking of a 20 stone man here. Daniel Dubois' jab is the best jab in the heavyweight division today. Really? You go that far? By far. You go that far? Absolutely by far. His timing, his accuracy. Most of the time, the jab is used as a point scorer, a point scorer to set up the backhand. But Daniel's jab, it, it's a hurtful punch. It's not just a point scorer. It's actually literally knocking 20 stone heavyweights backwards. That is some jab. Let's so have it, another look at it. Okay. This is against Hergovic, this is. Let's have a look here. While you're doing the this, jab. Yeah, while look you, at this for a shot, well, while, doubling up. If you're AJ going into this fight and he's going to work behind that jab, what do you do to try and counter that? You've got to concentrate. It's all about concentration. That's why um, a very fast jab is a hard jab to defend against because you don't know when it's coming. If Daniel is going to win the fight, the jab is going to play a major role in him getting the victory. A major role, because it will set up all his other work. So let's have a look now at another aspect of the arsenal of, of Daniel Dubois. And what happens for him if the fight's up close? What is he going to be looking for to land on, on Anthony Joshua? You know what, Fletch? Daniel Dubois, he's got a hidden weapon, and it's his left hook. Anthony Joshua cannot afford to underestimate Daniel Dubois' left hook. So let's have a look at here. And sometimes it's a sneaky little left hook occasionally. So this is against Hergovic again. Look at that for a left hook. He's on the attack. He's leading with it a little bit, but it doesn't matter. It does the job. And against Miller here. There he is there. There's that shot. Look at that for a shot downstairs. So he's actually doubling his left hook up there. He goes left hook to the head, and then he switches downstairs to the body. And then, look, he switches then. The damage he's done with the left, left hook to the body, but then he obviously switches the attack to the head. Look at this for a left hook. One there. That's a cracking punch. And again, and the referee jumps in here. Let's just move on, though, 
because in the past, a couple of fights involving uh, Daniel Dubois have been a bit controversial, the Usyk fight, and the low blow. Now, I don't think it's deliberate. I just think it's a case of Daniel occasionally loses concentration, but he can't afford to do that in this fight. So let's have a look at a couple of examples of him losing concentration. So against Gerald Miller, look at that for a shot there. That's a low shot, and there's another one coming up. There again. He nearly gets him on the kneecap. Like I say, Fletch, it's a lapse in concentration, and you're just throwing a, throwing a low shot. Are you absolutely no. convinced? Yes, I don't, right. think, I don't think it's um, a deliberate shot. The first one was so low. Fletch, from my own experience, <laughs> right. I've delivered the odd low blow in a, in a contest when I've just lapsed in concentration and I'm, and I'm aiming for the body, but I've just aimed too low with okay. the punch. So it can happen. But it's happened two or three times. Now, this is the controversial one with Alexander Usyk. So let's have a look at this. See, I think that one is totally different to the two you showed in the Miller yeah. fight. I mean, that, that's on the border. I mean, that, yeah. that's on the belt. I mean, the, 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 the two in the Miller fight, I mean, were really low. I think the AJ camp will be all over that. Yeah. They'll, they'll warn the referee and everything. He won't be able to get away with a lapse in concentration and doing that to Anthony Joshua. Finally, Fletch, we've got to look at Daniel DeBar's right hand because this is self-explanatory. He's got decent power, awesome power, I think. Let's have a look. This is Kevin Lorena. Kevin Lorena. I mean, look at that. Bang on the button. Self-explanatory. Watch this. He's actually moving away from his opponent, and then he just, again, counter-attacks as he beats him to the punch. It's only a short shot as short well. Short punch. Yeah. So against Bogdan Danu here, gets him on the ropes. Look at that for a shot. Absolutely perfect. This is against Nathan Gorman. Good double jab coming up here. Double jab, right hand, gets him on the side of the head. And Nathan's a good, good fighter. So he has got very, very good power, knockout power in either hand. But I do believe AJ is the more powerful with his right hand. But Dubois, without a shadow of a doubt, has got a better jab. It's who gets the tactics and can impose himself, who goes with the confidence on the night and handles the occasion better. It's absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Richie, thanks for breaking it down. It's been eye-opening stuff, and I hope it's given you a bit more insight into what you can expect to see on the big night, September the 21st. That's what it looks like on the screen. What we're going to do next is we're going to get Richie and George Groves, two former world champions, to show us exactly how this is going to look and what needs to happen when Anthony Joshua meets Daniel Dubois at Wembley for the heavyweight championship of the world. You've just seen Richie have a look at it in depth on the touch screen. Now we're going to bring a more practical approach and we're going to bring two former world champions in, in Richie Woodall and George Groves, to look at this in terms of how it's all going to happen in the ring. And Richie, you're going to take on the role of Anthony Joshua and just try and show us exactly how he's going to go about things on the big night. OK. Um, for Anthony and Joshua, I think, to land his right hand and have success in the contest, I think he's got to bring Daniel Dubois over his front foot. Daniel's obviously going to be working with his jab, but I think the way AJ has got to do it is, if you just... Go ahead, George, that's it. So it, if that's Daniel Dubois, I'm Anthony Joshua. Normally, if he throws a jab, you would parry with the right hand, OK, and then return your jab. I actually think, with a Daniel Dubois coming forward, what AJ might do is he parries with his left hand and then comes over with, with the right hand there. But you're saying to me, George, that it could be a problem for AJ also. Well, yeah, I mean, that's great. But obviously, if he's using that, that hand rather than the parallel hand to, yeah. to block and get rid of Dubois' jab, then obviously that right hand he's open for, which and we know Dubois can punch. So. so it comes with risks, but I think for him to come forward is AJ's best chance to land that shot as Daniel Barr's coming forward. But if Daniel's throwing the jab, he's got to deal with the jab. So he deals with the jab by parrying it with his left, coming over with his right. The only other thing I, I, I think about for AJ is he, he could do what we call a counter-attack. A counter-attack is beating him to the punch. So when he anticipates the jab coming, he throws out the, the shot straight away and meets him head on. He counter-attacks him and beats him to it. How important is Joshua's jab in terms of winning that battle? I do think it'll be important, most certainly, because he can't just go wading in there and get too close because we know that Daniel Dubois is a powerful man also. And he could, he could walk onto that same shot that he's trying to land. So it's got to be an educated jab, but it's got to be a jab that's not really scoring points. It's made Measuring, measuring the target, measuring the target to send that, uh, that right hand home. So that's the way we think that AJ is going to go about it. In an attacking sense, then, 
Daniel Dubois, George. Take us through what you think he's going to do. Dubois most commonly fights with his head a little bit forward, front foot loaded, but still has that exceptional power. He doesn't necessarily need to generate it always from the back leg. He's here. He's got a nicer flow, a nicer upper body rhythm in Joshua. You know, Joshua at times has been caught static, whereas Dubois will be thinking, right, have a nice flow, nice flow, get behind that jab. Nice and long, stiff, hard, wants to throw it so that when it lands, it feels like a right hand. Yes. He can double it up really well. And then once he's there and he's in range, and obviously he's going to want to let his big shots go, he throws bent arm shots really well. But what he also does is he'll target the body. And I think if but Joshua's George, what fighting... If, yeah, what if Anthony Joshua does this approach where he's leaning back, he's, he's maximising that height and reach, and he's sitting back a little bit, how does Daniel Dubois get to him? So, do, obviously, the, head, the head's back, but the body doesn't really go too far. So, right. he's there and he can be... If he's chased in his front foot and he's within range, then he's going to look to land those shots to the body. Sometimes they might come straight. And, obviously, if you're going to come with straight right to the body, there's a risk that the left might come with the top oh, or sorry, yeah. as you throw in the right. But that bit, those bent arm shots that Dubois throws so well to the body might pay dividends for him. But what makes it really interesting, Fletch, if he does decide that style of boxing and tries to get close to AJ, we know that Anthony Joshua has got a great right uppercut. So if they're in at close quarters, we know the left hook from Dubois is a dangerous shot here, it's a dangerous shot there. But when they're in close, Anthony Joshua, that uppercut, and he's got to be close to land that shot. You can't land an uppercut out there. You've got to be mid to short range, through the middle there, Daniel Dubois over his front foot. So that's another interesting side to it that AJ is very, very dangerous in at short mid-range with his right uppercut. I think it's fascinating. I think what both George and Richie are saying is that they're both going to be attack-minded on the night. This is going to be an explosive fight. And if it's anything to go by, what we've seen so far, when you're taking the main event and the undercard, when these fellows have been getting together, it's just been explosive full stop. Before the huge heavyweight title of fight, we have a stacked undercard to look forward to, with former British Olympian Josh Kelly facing former WBO super welterweight champion Liam Smith. Caught pretty much for a reason, but I didn't give myself that name. EBU middleweight champion Tyler Denny will defend his title against the unbeaten Hamza Shiraz. If I feel good, I'll fight him close. If I feel like I just want to cruise, I'll cruise. It's that much of a massive thing, you tell your grandkids about it. IBF and IBO super featherweight champion Anthony Kakachi will make his first defence against former IBF featherweight champion Josh Warrington. I just want the best version of Josh. I want to beat the best version of Josh. Two men absolutely knocking seven bells out of each other to win glory. And light heavyweight contenders Willie Hutchinson and Joshua Boazzi will battle it out for the WBO interim title, continuing a war that began when they sat down with Carl for a fiery face-off. Willie, the last time I spoke to you, you told me in 12 months you would be world champion. 100%. This fight is for an interim title. Yes. It will be mandatory for the world title afterwards. No, if he wins. If he wins. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm talking yeah, yeah. I would say the same to you. So if, right. no, if you win, 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 if you win, when you win it, when you win it, whatever you want to say. When I win it, yes. He knows because he's seen me. He shared the ring with me in sparring. You mentioned you had sparred. Someone would shout at me if I didn't say it. What happened when you sparred? He said I caused the biggest nightmares of his life. I was there. I don't tell lies. I was there. Wait, you're I'm not letting me say you don't tell lies. I'm like, not like a liar. I care or like that means anything. Well, it's what, the truth. What does that mean? I'm telling the I'm telling the honest truth. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring all the sparring up until you started acting like a fool. What you are. You're the, the fool, man. Listen to listen, me. One, thing, one, one thing you're not going to do the, is get rude to me. You see me? I'm no, calm and everything. You're, but one thing you're, you're not going to do. You're a One thing you're not going to do is get rude to me. It's a, it's a massive fight. It's on a huge card as well. How does it play out on the night? I'm, I'm going to ask you first, Josh. I come out on top. My answer is always the same. I come out on top. There's, there's no... It's 12 rounds, man. 12, 12 rounds. The a last time, man, so I'm this, happy you said that. The last always, man said the same thing, Carl. It's 12 Listen, rounds. And you've never been said. 12 rounds. Oh, and you cares? can't do 12 rounds. Who cares, bro? You ask me now, Carl. Go on, Willie. How's it go? And as like I said in the last time, but I guarantee 100% it'll happen. I'll knock him out in five rounds. I'm going to ask a question. I think I probably know the answer. Do we get a handshake? Oh, no. Not from me. He, he wouldn't shake me on the other side. I've never Quite, seen no, that as that. I ain't trying to shake Carl, thank you. Bro. All the best, boys. You, bro. Good luck for the fight. Thank you. Thank you Love very much. Carl. Okay, now we're not in an interview, bro. You're yeah. doing a lot of talking. Yeah, You're because doing it's a lot the truth. Because it's the truth. Yeah, because, yeah, because it's the truth. Yeah, 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 because it's the truth. No, but that Yeah, because it's the truth. Because you see, you clown. See, you clown. You see, you idiot being rude. What? 
Yeah, yeah, but go on then. Just go on. Tell me then. Go on. Just say what Just let me see what you got to say. There's a lot of talking you're doing, but now the cameras are not rolling. So if you're going to say anything. Yeah. Big man, please. Bro, we got to keep the peace, bro. Come on, we love the little spot in here. We'll get out of here. We just got to stand in, bro. Yeah, go on. Now there's no cameras. There's nothing going on. Oh, 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 Ah, lads, lads, lads. Calm, 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 calm. Willy, Willy, Willy. Calm down, calm down. Okay, it's boys. It's me, it's me, it's me. It's me. It's me. It's me. We're going to get the predictions for the main event in a minute, but we should talk about the undercard first. Um, let's start with Anthony Kakachi and Josh Warrington, your big friend from Belfast, against the man who you've been in there with. I mean, this could be a cracker. I think you could probably make an argument for, for both guys winning the fight, but I have a favourite in the fight, and that's... Anto Kikachi, he'll have gained a lot of confidence from his last win and high one against Joe Cardina as an underdog. It's Josh Warrington's first fight at super featherweight against a big super featherweight. He's only won one of his last five fights. Anto Kikachi has to be the favorite in this fight, but it's going to be a difficult fight. I did warn Anto that Josh's record probably doesn't suggest he's a puncher, but I've never been hit by anyone in a fight like Josh Warrington hit me. But in the same breath, I've never been hit in the gym by anyone that punches as hard as Anto Kikachi. And his record doesn't suggest he's a puncher either. So, uh, yeah, it's, um, may maybe I'm, I just suddenly got chinny. I don't know what happened, <laughs> but um, two guys aren't meant to be punchers, but I'm telling you, both can punch really hard. There'll be something in Josh Warrington, Carl, I'm convinced of it, where Josh will think, I haven't had a good luck a run of luck. I've had no luck at all. I gave up my world title. And he'll be looking at Kakachi and he'll be thinking, is Kakachi as good as this guy who I've beaten or lost close to? And he, 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 won't, he, won't, he won't consider Kakachi a great fighter. Never write off Josh Warrington. Yeah. It's as simple as yeah, that. Yeah. Richie, Hamza Shiraz, Tyler Denny. <sighs> yeah. Hamza Shiraz. His height and reach, he's, he's a freak at the weight, isn't he? Middleweight, six foot three, isn't he? Something like that. Tyler Denny, Midlander, tough kid, will give it everything. It's a tough night for Tyler Denny. Can he do it? Yes, he can, but he's got to get up close. He's got to rough him up. He's got to try and work his body, switch the attack from body to head, most certainly. But it's actually trying to get in on the inside where you come unstuck uh, against Hamza Shiraz. Richie, even with, even with Hamza's dimensions and his size, He's actually really good on the inside as well. So when Danny does get close, yeah, true, yeah. Hamza Shiraz is, is very, very good at, at fighting in the pocket. If Tyler Denny can upset that enormous height and reach advantage that that that, that Shiraz has got, I think we've got two unbelievable fights there. One more, I just want to focus on before we get the predictions on the main event, um, and it's been a little bit lively to this point. <laughs> Josh Boazzi, Willie Hutchinson. I mean, it's always lively when Willie Hutchinson's around, I suppose. I mean, that's all part of the show, but that's fascinating too. Great win for him last time out against uh, Richards. I, I had him as an underdog for that fight. I didn't think he would have quite enough, but he boxed exceptionally well on the front foot, on the back foot, you know, <clears throat> playing to the crowd. Really looked like he's enjoyed himself and he will be, I'm sure, looking to take that momentum into this fight. Buatsi, you'd say that's a tougher fight than, than the Richards fight. Maybe. Hutchinson's toughest fight to date, but it's a fascinating one. It's, it's a main event fight on its own. Pretty much every, every, every fight on this card could be a main event fight on its own, but uh, that might be one that, that steals the show. It's the reason why you can't miss it. It's TNT Sports Box Office for a reason. Top of the bill, Anthony Joshua against Daniel Dubois, but the undercard, as everybody said, all the undercard fights could be main events elsewhere, so make sure you're with us. Wembley Stadium It's going to be a fantastic night. So time to put your money where your mouth is. Bunsi, you're up first. Who wins it? Well, for a start, it's explosive. And it's going to be explosive. It might just be the best heavyweight fight that could be made right now. I truly and utterly believe that. I'm just not sure that AJ will not land consecutive right hands. But I am sure that if he lands them, is going to hurt Dubois. This is not going to be Hergovic 2 for the first three rounds. If AJ's landing that right hand again and again and again, it's the end of Dubois and it could be early. What is the Joshua now, this new experience, more experienced Joshua, if he gets caught? We know Dubois can punch phenomenally hard. He might be the hardest puncher in the heavyweight division. 
Before in the past, we've seen Joshua unravel a little bit. When he gets caught now, does he have that experience to weather, the, weather that bad time, you know, weather, the, weather the shots, get himself back in the fight? Or is Dubois going to be too slick, too fresh, and be able to finish him? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. I think I'm still edging on, on Joshua. I think I'd pick Joshua to win this fight, but... Get I'm, not the <laughs> I'm not convinced. Get him off the can't him off I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. I'll go Joshua. Joshua. Rich. I would like to see Daniel Dubois working with his jab and being patient and not going so much forward. Because I think if he goes forward, I think he's going to walk onto a big right hand. And for me, I think, like the boys have said, I actually think AJ will win this fight. Again, sorry to say. For, eight, for, for Daniel Dubois, I think he gets knocked out and I think he gets knocked out mid rounds myself. I think, yeah, he'll do well with his jab, but eventually I think AJ will catch him with that right hand. So I'm going AJ knockout. Carl, that's three for Anthony Joshua. Any change? The only thing I'm confident about is I don't think it's a, a really long fight. If it sees round seven, I'll be, I'll be quite surprised, but both guys can win this fight. And I think for Daniel Dubois, we talked about his jab. It has to be, hurtful from the start he has to if he's going to win he has to dictate it with his job but like the rest of the boys i think that he probably gets hit a little bit too clean still and because of that and because aj punches so hard and he's so athletic and so explosive i think aj inside the distance before you close fletch you're not getting away <laughs> with asking us how do you see it ending my opinion counts for very little compared to you four but I just think the momentum is with Daniel Dubois. I think the improvements that he's made, what I saw against Kevin Lorena, Jarrell Miller, and then into Philip Hergovic, and I, I think this is Daniel Dubois' time. So even though I'm in the minority and I could look really silly, I'm going to be the one in the or room. Well, you could look a genius. Well, I could look <laughs> a genius. I'm going to be the one in the room that goes for Daniel Dubois. So that's what we think. The experts have spoken, thanks to Steve Bunce, to George Groves, to Richie Woodall, and to Carl Frampton. All that's left to say is the venue is Wembley Stadium on Saturday the 21st of September. It's the IBF Heavyweight Championship of the World between Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois. Two Brits in the ring, history potentially on the line that night for AJ. The undercard is stacked. We can't wait. Make sure you're with us. TNT Sports Box Office. <laughs>